What's good guys and welcome to the Syntho YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you 14 Ableton hacks that will instantly enhance your workflow, allowing you to spend more time creating and less time navigating the software. I've used these tips to level up my productivity, allowing me to create the best music of my life and to sign to my dream labels. You'll be surprised at how effective these tips are, so let's jump in. Syntho. So my first tip is going to be setting up an Ableton template. When you load up a blank project, you need to have things ready to go. If you're an artist, you want to make sure your pencils are sharp and your sketchpad is ready open for you to start drawing. And the same applies to when you're working with music. Whether it be you're creating hip hop, house, any style of music, or even recording vocals, it's really good to have a default project ready to go so you can jump into making music faster. To get started, you want to start by adding all the things you need in your project. Here I have a 909 because I like making house music. I have an external instrument for my hardware, some audio tracks, an audio and a MIDI track. Also, I've got some reverb and delays and a compression send on my returns. From here, you need to go to file and then head down to save set as template. Then name it as you want. So house template and press enter to save it. If you want to load this every time you open up Ableton, all you need to do is go to file and then save live set as default set. You can also right click on your other templates and click save default live set. This means that every time you open Ableton, your default set will load and you're primed to get started to making music. My next tip is creating default MIDI and audio channels. There are some things that you're always going to use, whether it be a MIDI or an audio channel. So it's great to have things load up when you add a new one. To do this, first add a new MIDI or audio channel by pressing Command, Shift and T or Command T for audio. Then add the audio and MIDI effects that you want. So for a MIDI channel, I'm going to add EQ, a utility, a kickstart or sidechain plugin, turn that off and also a saturator that I'll have turned off as well, just in case I need it. Then head up to the top of the channel and right click and then click save default MIDI track. This means that every time I load up a new MIDI channel, this is gonna have all of those effects plugins ready to go. The same applies for an audio track, so you're not gonna be spending ages searching for the plugins that you're always using. This is gonna speed up your workflow massively and you can spend more time creating music. So my third tip is going to be having folders to easily access in your browser. I have all my sample packs in one folder, which means I don't have to open them in another window searching through them. I can easily demo audio and MIDI files in the Ableton browser. Simply head over to the side and click add folder and select the folder you need to add. Whilst working with sample packs is great, it's also good to have a folder with all of your Ableton projects in. This means you can access your Ableton projects at any time. And also by opening them in the Ableton browser, you can actually select individual tracks and channels within that project and add them to a new one. This means if you want to reuse a sound or you have an old idea that you didn't use in another project, you can add them in really simply and easily. So once I've added my Ableton projects folder, I can find the project I want to work with open it up and select the channel that I want to add to the new project, drag it over and I can drop it in. Now I'll have this entire channel added as if it was in the previous project. My next tip will be color coding your favorite synths, plugins and audio effects. In my yellow folder, I have all my favorite audio effects as well as some plugins that I use really consistently. In my orange folder, I have lots of presets that I've made myself and the occasional sample that I love as well. This means I can access them really quickly and I can spend more time creating sounds with these presets and plugins. There's a few sounds that I consistently use in my tracks and these have become recognizable throughout my music. This is a tip that I'd give to any artist that is serious about developing a name for themselves. My next few tips are going to be Ableton shortcuts, which will allow you to navigate the software faster. So the most common shortcut that I use when I'm working in Ableton is Alt, Command and L. This will open and close the detail view, whether that be your audio effects or the piano roll. It means you're going to be spending more time making music and less time pressing the small arrow in the bottom right hand corner. So my next shortcut is pressing Command, Shift and D. By selecting a certain area, you can duplicate the entire section of this project, moving everything else to the right. This is amazing for arrangement and you'll save a lot of time by doing this. If you need to delete whole sections of the track and move everything else to the left, simply select the area you need and press Command, Shift and Backspace. 
This is particularly useful when you've already arranged a track and you need to add or take away a particular section. If you want to insert an empty space in the middle of your project, then you need to press Command and I. This will open up a window which will allow you to type in any amount of bars to insert in the middle of your project. This is great for when you need to trial out new ideas or start new arrangement concepts. As you can see now, 32 bars of empty space has been inserted into the middle of my project. We can use our previous tip if we need to get rid of some of that as well by selecting and pressing Command, Shift and Backspace. My next few shortcuts are going to be really useful for housekeeping and keeping your project organised and tidy. This means you can spend less time figuring out where stuff is and more time getting into the action. It's great to keep similar elements grouped together in your project. Simply select the ones you need to and press Command or Control G. If you need to get rid of the group, simply press Command, Shift and G. Not only will this keep your project organised, but it also means you can start doing some group processing, which are especially great for things such as drums. In this project, you can clearly see I've got my percussion group together and I've also got my bass group together, allowing me to keep it nice and organised as well as processing them individually. To keep your project even more organised, it's good to rename channels and also colour code them. Simply select the track that you need and press Command R. This will allow you to type in the name and to change the colour of it, right click and choose the colour that you need. When you're working with groups, you can right click and click assign track colour to group tracks and clips. This will make everything within that group that specific colour. This will help really keep your project nice and organised and by colour coding different sections of your track, you can clearly see where things are. If you're not sure what to call a channel, just type in what it sounds like because at the end of the day, it's about helping you identify what that sound is. You can see here, I've got this track named as Crazy Saw Sweet. This just helps me identify this easily in the project. My next tip is going to be working with locators. This is an incredible tool to help you easily arrange your track. You can see here, I've got locators at every point where I have changes and key sections in my track, whether that be intro, bringing the bass in, breakdowns and drops. When you want to add a new locator, simply hover your mouse until you start seeing the speaker icon on the bar you want to add it. Right click and simply click add locator. You can then label the locator and press enter to add it in. If the position of your section has changed, you can simply drag the locator left or right. When the project is playing, these can also act as mini play buttons. If you're someone who likes to record live or play with things on the fly, then these next few tips are for you. When you've recorded MIDI in, instead of having to select all the notes and quantizing them, you can actually set it up so it quantizes as you play things in. Record quantization means that any note you play in will be in time and snap to the grid. Simply head over to edit, head down to record quantization, and then go down to 16th note quantization. You can use some of the other quantization modes, but 16th note quantization, nine times out of 10, is the one you want to use. When you're playing with a MIDI channel, sometimes you would be jamming and you just have this amazing idea, but you weren't pressing record. Luckily, Ableton has the MIDI capture button because Ableton is constantly recording what you're playing in, even if you don't press the record button. Simply play in your notes and press the MIDI capture button. This is great because sometimes the best ideas come from when you're not recording. Another great Ableton tool for when you want to be more hands-on with your project is using the crossfader. In the bottom right hand corner, there's a little X button which will open the crossfader window. You can then assign any of the channels to either the A or B side of the crossfader. By moving the crossfader to the A side, you'll be able to hear everything assigned to the A side plus everything unassigned. By then switching to the right, you'll be able to cut out the sounds on the A side or even hear the ones you've assigned to the B. If you don't want to use your mouse, you can easily map the crossfader to a MIDI controller, allowing you to be nice and hands-on with the project. If the crossfader is not your thing, you can easily activate and deactivate parameters using keys. Simply head over to the top right-hand corner and press the key button. Select the parameter you want to turn on or off. In this case, I'm going to be turning the speaker on and off for the kick and percussion channels. So I'm going to press the one, and then press the N key to assign it to that key. You can either assign multiple parameters to one key or multiple keys across your keyboard. Then press the key button to turn off this window. Now, every time I press that assign key, it's gonna turn on and off that parameter.
So there was my top 14 Ableton hacks to instantly enhance your productivity. Make sure you go back over the video so you can incorporate all of these tips into your workflow. If you're ready to level up your music game, then make sure you go check out the Syntho app. Syntho.